All right, welcome back. We continue on. Uh, in our previous one, we added these new uh, functions. These are often called APIs. Uh, you hear this term a lot, API, which stands for Applications Programming Interface. And in fact, you as a software developer will spend your whole career using APIs and uh, and sometimes creating APIs like we are here, right? These are could be these functions are can also be called APIs. Well, in the previous video, we hard coded some values for the get size and the get list. I th for this one, I want to focus on implementing this particular one where you actually say list and you give a list. So that means let's go to our CLI uh, code that we had, and instead of hard coding this this list size we're going to have a static now remember static I'm gonna say make variable file scope mean you can only see the value in this file so static it's gonna be an integer and it's gonna be the list size Right, and, and the idea is that's the data, that's the, the value, that's the variable. And when we call get list size, we return that. So what we'll return is the list size. So this will no longer be test, this will be the real thing. Very important point. This is sometimes called data hiding. Data hiding. The data is hidden inside this file and the only way you can get access to it is by this that's by design by hiding it it makes sure the data cannot be changed other than by you right people can read it other people can get it but no one can change it but you why because only inside this file can this be changed so that's going to be the the uh, list size and then of course we also need our list so in a similar manner we're going to have a static um, character pointer to pointer which will be we'll call it our list and so what this will be this these test words actually you know what I'm gonna comment these out and I'm gonna move I'm gonna copy this and put it right before here. So I commented out so you can remember how we did that. Um, I encourage you just to comment out the code so you can keep it as a when you're need to review and study you see that's what we did for test purposes. But now what we want to do when you call get list we want to return whatever this um, list list happens to be. So again this is an example of file scope by putting static in front of it this can only be accessed in this file and this is another example of data hiding the data is hidden in the file the only way you can get access to it is by calling uh, CLI get list okay so key points there now we need to handle this case dash dash list well remember earlier we got down to here where it said string compare uh, dash dash list and we said push uh, we need to handle the list right here All right so that's that's what we need to handle so let's do that instead of our put string maybe I'll just comment it out so we remember that's what we did and let's think about this if you get to this point we know at least you've entered this much However, you also need some words, right? You need to enter more than just this. You need to enter some words. Um, so what I will do is say, well, let's verify at least three words. In other words, we want to make sure you've entered at least three words because trying to guess two or one is probably not not too interesting 
So we'll say if the argument count, and remember the argument count is this, one, two, three, four. If the argument count is less than five, now why five? One, two, three, four, five. I want you to enter at least three words, which means the argument count would be at least five. Now if it's less than five, you did not enter enough arguments. And if that's the case, let's do a printf. In fact, let's do a fprintf to standard error and say not enough arguments. All right, backslash n. So not enough arguments. In fact, we could even say uh, f, well, we'll just say not enough arguments. And you know what? If you do that, there's really, since this is an error condition, you could argue there's probably no more we need to do because uh, they, not enough arguments were entered. We could certainly put a while loop and, and prompt, but f for simplicity, I'll say for now, just exit. So we'll say exit, and we'll give a 1. All right, well, look. We're getting this implicit declared. So we need a header file. Now suppose you're not sure what header file. Well, we could go ahead and click on Run. We see we get the warning. We see it's implicitly declared. And sometimes, and this is a good example of that, notice it points to it, and it even tells you you need to include standard lib.h. So this is an example where, oh, we know that we should include standard lib.h. So I'll come up here, include standard lib, stands for standard library, standard library, standard lib. And of course, as soon as we do that, we're now good. So we took care of that error case. In fact, let's let's test it. Let's do a, a build. Period slash main dash dash list one. Well, we know that's not enough. Not enough arguments. Well, fully. How about two? Not enough arguments. How about three? Ah. We got by. It says, guess what word from these words. Of course, we need to finish it out from here. And in fact, if we get to here, we've got the list, we've got at least the number of arguments. What we need to do is set this list and also set the number. So let's come here, we'll say set, set the list size and the list. Well, the list size is going to equal to whatever the argument count is minus 2, right? We subtract out, subtract dot main and dash dash list, right? These two arguments we subtract out, that'll be how many are left over. And then, as far as the list itself, well, when you think about the list, it's going to start from here. So you could argue, we want to skip this one, we want to skip this, we want to start to here. So we'll say, okay, that is arg v of 2, right? 0, 1, 2. And notice how it's helping to say, warning, warning, incompatible pointer types. You're saying this should be a star star, and this is just a star. So what we want to do is take the address of that. Not the string itself, not the one, but the address of where it's at. And again, I realize this is a little confusing because we 
you know, pointers are always confusing. So if you're a little confused by this, don't worry about it. A lot of others are confused too. It'll just fall into place the more we use it. But take advantage of the warnings, right? I mean, it kind of helps us. It says we've got things that don't match. So we say, give us the address of that. Give us the address of art. So now if we run this, period slash main dash dash list, how about one, two, all right, let, let's do colors this time. How about red, green, blue, yellow? Cool. Guess what word from these words? All right. So we've actually got it now where we handled this dash dash list option. And, and not only are we trying to have modular code, we're trying to have modular uh, videos as well. So this is a good video to um, you know get this function running. So I think I'll stop here. Some as a quick review, again by putting things inside a file, variables inside a file called static. This is called file scope. They can only be accessed inside the file, and you provide functions, also called APIs where you can get access to that. So here they can get the list size or an external thing can get uh, get access to the list itself. But the only person that can change the list is us, right? We're the ones that change the size and we're the ones that change the, uh, the, the actual list itself. So we're the only place in your whole program that it can be changed is here which is good. Okay, get this one running, and then we'll continue on in the next video. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.